hi hello guys and welcome back to my channel i hope you can hear me well with my new headphones because mine got stolen a week ago and i finally got the new ones welcome also to my new setup it's been once again a lot of life changes yeah this video is gonna be a little bit uh, different than everything i've done until now and much more personal so i'm gonna record it in a different concept for myself basically the idea is just to record my current state of mind kind of in the form of a letter for my future self to look at what the 24 year old me has been learning about life in a little bit of a rough but also really funky way it's gonna be a summary of some lessons that life have taught me this year and i just wanted to share with all of you guys who are curious about my life or want to learn something with me or yeah, can maybe take something out of this because i think those are really meaningful lessons that i'm gonna take with me for life and if you are curious let's dive straight into it so i must first of all say that 2023 was a very eventful very dynamic and extremely emotional year a lot of things have happened and a lot of first time things kept occurring so it was my first serious relationship i've moved three times this year i've experienced my first <laughs> break up I lost somebody very precious and really close to me I've had people around me dealing with a lot of heavy things in their life and really dark events kept happening around I also became a vehicle owner and I just finished my second motorbike driver's test and I can see the final line with that but really the life has been going full power and I'm also a third year student now I can also see the finish line with my study program so it's been a lot if i learned something about myself that would be that independence is one of my strengths and it really turned out to be my own self-comfort and self-support spots because i figured that's something that nobody can take away from me and that's something i'm really grateful i have for myself and it really helped me a lot throughout the years of my life until now but especially in the timings like this and I felt like the freedom and the home stays with me no matter what just because I trust myself that everything will be fine and that I'm not dependent on anybody else but only counting on myself and I think it's a really healthy way to approach life as well and the next lesson would be that it's extremely important that you listen to your inner voice and when something doesn't feel right in your gut feeling or in your body when you don't have a satisfying answer to the questions like is this what I want for myself or how does this make me feel if you're not happy with the answers to these questions then something is going on and I've learned that you gotta actually listen to those signals within your body I also learned to watch out for triggers around me and some red flags that turned out to be patterns but were ignored for a longer period of time than they were supposed to even though looking back I remember exactly what I was thinking in those moments back then but you kind of find excuses to not dive into it but that's exactly what takes you to a really wrong direction so don't overlook the patterns but actually take action on those don't settle for less for yourself when it doesn't feel right because when you are connected with yourself deep inside you know that this is not for you and there are no reasons to excuse or take something less than what you think you deserve i've also learned that there is a difference between how you feel about somebody and how somebody makes you feel i want this one to really sit with you guys because it's a fine line but it's two different concepts and i really learned the hard way that it's going to be two really different things i've also learned that agreements mean nothing until they are actually written down because somebody can say something different the next day and it's so important that if it's something serious or something that can backlash at you later please make sure it's on the paper otherwise it can be claimed to be invalid and then you cannot prove anything anymore but i hope you never need to experience situations like that so sometimes verbal agreements really mean nothing next one is gonna be a big one and a tough one we cannot change people it is not our job to be a therapist or helper or to make other people happy it is just not in your scope of responsibility ever and my biggest issue i think was thinking or believing that just loving somebody extra hard would make things change that caring for somebody will 
make them think differently, do things differently, but in the end, the only person who can actually make the change is the person who is supposed to be involved in this. And then you just let it go. There is so much at some point you just gotta admit for yourself that you've done enough. And it took me a really long time to kind of realize that it's time to let the savior in myself go. A really tough cookie to chew on. You know, every time there are those beliefs coming up that it's gonna get better. You kind of continue to rationalize somebody's behavior when actually looking at the patterns, nothing has changed. And it takes time. Letting go takes time. But you gotta start somewhere. And I've been taking my first steps. I mean, it's been over a month that I haven't spoken to the person. It's been more than two months that I've actually lost them from my life or they decided to leave and I'm not gonna lie it goes in ups and downs but I'll just allow the process to happen you know yeah I figured that some wounds really hurt more than the others and this one is really really deep because another lesson I learned that also if you're gonna experience true love it just opens you up you are so vulnerable and that's why I guess I was hurt so badly. Then the next point is gonna be a short one, is that you only trust actions and not words. Because even if somebody says they wanna change anything, if they do something completely different, it sums up all the effort to zero. So it's only true when it's actually happening. Then I've also learned that there are people who want to love us and are probably right people for us and they are just a perfect match, but some people just don't have the resources or the capabilities to love us the way we deserve to be loved. And this is heavy to hear, but it's just what it is and it's tough to hear, but it's crucial that you understand it as well. And you need to know about me or something that I learned about myself also along my personality test to saying it that I am really not an emotional person. Like logic and common sense are always gonna come before my emotions actually kick in. It's really hard to get me in disbalance, but most importantly, I'm never gonna allow my emotions to take over because I really like to be in control of that and my rationale is very strong but this year has been really rough for all of the reasons I've mentioned before how I was able to feel this much, this was really new to me I've felt so much pain and grief and, and all of that emotional mess that I've been going through and I remember sitting together with a friend who is like a mentor to me I met through school who was sitting and having a coffee with me and you know I was telling him the details of how I've been doing and what my life is going looking like right now and that it's been tough and in all of that he suddenly cut me off and he just said and what about you and that was the moment I figured out I was only talking about the other person who had nothing to do what I was going through right now because yeah it happened happens but why am I overlooking my own emotions so much? Because the only thing I now have left to do is to find a way to move forward because that's the only thing left, you know? I've tried everything and it didn't work, so what's the point? I need to dedicate all of that energy that I have left into helping myself feel good again. To bring myself up and find my smile and push through the day, but that's the only way to start your healing. The next one is gonna be a really important one and it's that it is okay not to be okay. You must let yourself feel whatever is building up in you because if you don't do that it just starts eating you up from inside and postponing to feel the pain to feel the grief is not sustainable in the long run and it's gonna backlash at you so badly i've seen it literally in front of me and i've just learned that whatever you're going through you gotta leave it at the moment because otherwise it's gonna come back to you later and the only way to actually start healing is to first feel whatever you're going through and 
I've cried a lot this year. I really did. I didn't even know I could cry this much. I was so freaking emotional. And that's probably because I really opened up to somebody who who really got to my heart and unfortunately it is what it is right now and I guess the lesson would be it's okay to sometimes at those lower moments just rely on people who are around you that's exactly why they are close people to you friends, family, neighbors I'm so grateful that I was able to have so many good people around me to carry me through this and that's okay just let yourself be and just go into it full on but let your heart hurt or whatever emotion you're going through just let yourself feel it to the extent you need to feel it to then just breathe it out and i'm just blessed to have so many people who were there to give me a hug or just listen but it's so important that you also do the step to actually open up and speak about it because that's something you need to do for yourself just, i've been surrounded by so much love and so much empathy which is so beautiful and as a really big-hearted person i also realized that it's okay to also receive love back sometimes and it's been just so helpful to me just get out all of those emotions and have so much sympathy from people around me who have been through similar things you just realize how connected we are actually in things that are going on and i'm not saying that stories are similar they're definitely not but the feeling you have inside of you is something that you can share with others and that's fine i even had people you know cry next to me just because they could feel the pain i was leaving and i think that's just so beautiful and that's something to really cherish for life and if somebody who is watching this right now have seen me for the past months, I just want to say that I'm blessed to have you and I'm really grateful for all the love that I've been able to get for the past months. I feel really relieved that I have this in my life. I've called my parents the most in, I think, all the years I've lived, like, abroad. <laughs> but even for them, you know, I wouldn't say we are super close, but I guess it was the first part, like, first time I needed to admit that I feel so weak and so down. But that's exactly why you have parents, you know? They take you for who you are, they've seen your highest and the lowest, and I think they were also a little bit uh, frustrated that this actually happened to me. But my point is, even with your parents, it's just so important that you share what it is and i'm happy that they never tried to minimize my pain or tried to you know calm me down it's okay i see you are hurt and it's fine just take your time and do something that you like and you don't have to do anything if you don't feel like it then i don't know what it was so hard to just let myself be sometimes but i guess that's what hurt feels like yeah it's really new to me guys but uh, I guess another lesson would also be to not let anybody ever minimize the, what you're experiencing and what you're going through and how you're feeling it as well. I think in our modern society, it's so common to just jump to conclusions, but it's so important that you listen sometimes and you just don't have to say anything. It's just accept that the person is feeling a certain way and just listen and be there. Just having my parents there for me was a very calming feeling you know be dependent on others when you cannot do it on your own anymore but it also teaches you really to appreciate people around you i guess the last thing i wanted to share in this video i don't even know why i'm crying it's gonna be a long process because every time i'm thinking it's going better there's just some days that's yeah difficult to push back the thoughts and the feelings that uh, i guess we just learn to live with it which is fine and I guess the last one is going to be from the book that I was reading for the past month. That really just helped me to filter out my emotions a little bit. It's called Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. It's an amazing author, really simple to read. But there was that thought among every other, every small thing that I've taken note on from reading this book. She shared that basically we are our own biggest enemy in terms of what we dare to do. And to do something new, it only takes you 8 seconds of actual feel of discomfort. Can you count to 8 seconds 
and figure that there are so many opportunities that you could make use of just by allowing yourself to feel a little bit of discomfort or fear of failure or whatever it's gonna be but that's an idea that I really want to explore in maybe 2024 looking into yeah holiday season that is coming soon now it's gonna be my first Christmas alone not like I <laughs> cared a lot for the past years but this is gonna be really new I've also never lived on my own which is <laughs> so nice I'm really enjoying myself yeah this is something for me to discover in the future so once again guys thank you for checking out this video if I could help anybody to maybe go through something similar, something heavy, something difficult in their life, then I would be really happy. Uh, but for right now, I guess I'm gonna leave this here, my future's all. Thank you very much guys for being here, and I really appreciate everybody who is also approaching me in real life to just catch up. Uh, gonna try maybe in 2024 to post more often but that's on the planning let's see what reality looks like <laughs> i guess that's life man and i'm curious what next year is gonna bring us so happy holidays everybody and see you in the next one